Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm, and today I'm going to be talking about a hobby of mine. Uh, it's kind of new. I've done it in the past, but uh, I'm now focused quite heavily in it. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it, and what I'm getting out of it, and why I'm doing it, and, you know, maybe explaining some things about it that maybe you or you may not know. And that is the world of flight simulation. So this is, uh, you are flying around virtually in a computer. And that's it, right? So let me go back to the beginning. When I was a kid, I always wanted to get my private pilot's license. Uh, so much so that when I was a young kid, like, I don't know, 11 or so, uh, for Christmas, I asked for the Sporties Private Pilot Study Guide video series, which was pretty expensive. It was a couple hundred bucks back then. And it was videos on learning how to fly. And... Uh, some of the reasons why I never could get my private pilot's license is one is it's expensive. It always has been expensive, but growing up on Long Island, it was particularly expensive. Flying out of Republic, which is uh, was only a few miles from my house, I lived in Huntington and Republic uh, Airport, which is for a small general aviation aircraft, was a few miles away in Farmingdale, right down Route 110, so the road I lived off of. Uh, but it was, it was expensive, and uh, we never knew, uh, being colorblind, if that would be an issue. My father uh, said he was a pilot in Korea, that he used to fly uh, cargo planes. I don't know much about it. He didn't keep up with it. Uh, so the dream went on the back burner, and there were programs back then on the Atari. They were, you know, line drawings. They had a few airports that they'd modeled, but that it, it was it was a game, you know, it was basically a kind of a, just like Scram, which was a, how to run a nuclear reactor kind of game. I mean, they were, you know, educational games at best. So, uh, into the 90s, there was Flight Simulator for Microsoft in when Windows 95 was out, and this was much more realistic but it still was basically a video game and at that time I worked for a news organization on Long Island and one of the things they did was they bought a helicopter and there was a helicopter pilot and helicopter cameraman and that helicopter cameraman transferred out I applied for the job and I got the job just so I could be around aviation and I flew in a helicopter for a couple of years I was the cameraman. I flew out of Republic Airport, and we would go up. And one of, again, the reason why I really wanted the jobs because I always loved aviation. I thought maybe that would satisfy the bug, and it did to a certain extent. Uh, while I didn't get to fly, I did help navigate. We flew around the New York Central, uh, New York City area, we, Long Island, Connecticut, New Jersey. We flew kind of that whole area. Occasionally, we would make our way even further, but not really. And that was pretty low in flying uh, height-wise. You know, we were usually around 1,000 feet. We didn't go too high. When we went once up to 4,000 feet in the helicopter, it was quite different because you are just in a bubble, you know, and it's like, you look right out. Uh, I did get to fly in the Cessna a couple of times. When I was in college, I made a student film, and desperate, I had a scene with a... Uh, an aerial shot in it and we rented a Cessna for my film and we flew out to uh, somewhere on the south shore to some airport I don't even know where and we, we shot a scene and came back and that was exciting for me and then one time we had to fly the helicopter to Pennsylvania to be painted and we took a Cessna to go and pick it up and I got to fly the Cessna for two minutes and I did fly the helicopter for one minute, and flying a helicopter is much different. Very difficult. Very difficult. I transferred out of news. I opened up a horse farm with my wife, as you may know. Uh, in between that, uh, I, I did get tired of news, so I transferred out and worked for several different, uh, different networks. And that was the end of it, right? So... Uh, starting our business. Here we are with the business, and now I am uh, interested in aviation again, but my wife has a fear of flying. She certainly has a fear of me flying. 
I don't have much time to dedicate to getting in the air. It's still prohibitively expensive to get a recreational pilot's license, a sport pilot's license, or a private pilot's license. It can cost you anywhere between 4000 unrealistically, to $15,000. And then you've got to keep up with it. There are uh, medical exams. You have to get to the airport. You have to fly. You have to do all this. And this is just not feasible in my time of life. Also, it makes my wife nervous. However, flight simulation has come such a long way now that people often do who cannot fly for real or who want to learn uh, how to fly, fly on the computers and the simulation again is so realistic that it is mind-boggling. People have learned how to fly using flight simulators. They've used it in conjunction with actual lessons in real planes. There are airline pilots who have retired and now fly full-on flight simulation and say it, other than a few things, it is fairly realistic. Everything is modeled in the computer very accurate, the forces of the plane, things about the plane, the routes, uh, the airports modeled, the road data is all taken. That when you're flying in a simulation over a road, that is a real road that actually exists. Uh, the aircraft, again, modeled. The scenery is modeled and there are add-ons and people and enthusiasts who, who build on that. There is ways to take satellite imagery and paste it on top so when you're flying over and you see you are seeing the real world and I've done that for a couple of key areas on my computer and I've got a uh, the controls can be very simple or very complex I have a yoke and I've got rudder pedals that uh, enhance the experience I've got a iPad where I can control certain aspects of the aircraft that I'm, I'm flying, but there are people who actually build full-on panels that look exactly like the real thing, switches, the whole thing. There are people who learn to fly helicopters. There are people who learn to fly uh, gliders. There are people who learn to fly aircraft that don't exist anymore or that have never existed. Or uh, There are enthusiasts in it who actually learn how to fly full-on commercial aircrafts they are extremely dedicated. They fly real routes. They fly with uh, real traffic that is tracked live through the computer. So airplanes that are actually in the sky translate into your computer <laughs> simulation. I've taken clips, and you've probably been watching some of it, of a different time. Uh, it was a flight for me flying from Republic, and I flew over JFK. Well, actually, I flew over uh, Jones Beach, JFK, into Manhattan and then uh, up over Central Park and we landed in Teterboro. My landing was not perfect by the way, I was just starting to get distracted and I just wanted to end the video so I can shoot this video right now and talk to you about the, the hobby. And I've already gone on for about nine minutes or so, so I'm gonna be wrapping this up. But there are many reasons why people do the simulation. It, they are unable to fly, they are unable to afford to fly, uh, no time. You can go to places where you, you can't actually go in real life without a great expense or difficulty. You can fly around the world and people have virtually. They've mapped out courses and flown all around the world and there are uh, people who are enthusiasts on the other side with air traffic control and there are people who will control your traffic and you're talking to a real live human being. It's not just a simulation. Um, I don't plan on getting into any of that, but I don't know where this is going to take me. And one of the reasons why I'm getting back into this is one, I've always had a love of aviation. Uh, we flew recently, but even before that, um, you know, just I'm somebody who always enjoys learning about new things that I don't know. So part of the me getting into the vinyl community and vinyl and, and, and other audiophile things, I, I enjoy the process of learning things that interest me. I'm not kind of a person who reads fiction books. I tend to read nonfiction books. So the information that I go through in a private pilot curriculum would apply completely to the simulation. It can be as realistic as you want it to be. It can be as unrealistic as you want it to be. Uh, you can fly 10,000 feet 
and not lose consciousness. But the planes are modeled, so that way, you know, a Cessna is not built for that and, uh, and, and, and acts accordingly and ices up and there's real world weather that can be tracked into the computer. So you could be flying exactly what the real weather is at your location. And uh, I flew over the farm because I did download and create uh, photorealistic for, for my area right here. So it's interesting, you know, I'm like, hey, there's my house. Oh, that's where the, the Walmart is. And, oh, you know, and all from the sky virtually. And again, the, the realism is immense. Uh, the checklists are there. The, all the procedures are there in this virtual world. There are three different programs. I'm using X-Plane 11, which works in Linux very well. One of the you know, things that I needed for my, my setup. There is a flight simulator, uh, X, which is several years old, at least 10 years old, uh, but there is a new version 2020 coming out soon. And there's Prepper, Prepared, Prep 3D, it's called a couple different things, which is basically Flight Simulator X and built upon by Lockheed Martin. And I should also say that these programs are used by actual uh, training facilities. Some of them, if you had it certified, would actually apply to real life time, simulation time that counts on your license and certificates and things like that. That's how accurate these things are. When I first started the airplane uh, and I taxied, uh, it started pulling to the left and I crashed. I'm like, well, what's, what's going on here? And uh, it turns out that that is realistic, that the, there is a torque to the airplane because of the propeller going and that you have to compensate with rudder pedals. I got into a Grumman aircraft. That's the other thing too. You can uh, freely get into different planes without, without much expense got into a Grumman airplane and I couldn't control it at all with the rudder pedal and normally the rudder pedals can control a wheel on small aircraft but not on the Grumman they didn't have that you had to use braking you had to use something called differential braking and once I figured that out it was a breeze and I got to fly a vintage 70s airplane that I own now and for free it was actually a free add-on and that's the other thing too the community that's out there is quite robust uh, you can, again, be as realistic or fantasy, fly anywhere, however you want. It's up to you. I'm going the route where I'm trying to be more realistic. So I've been working on what a normal pilot would be working on at this stage is I'm doing uh, traffic patterns. So I take off and I turn and I make my uh, circuit around the airport and doing touch and goes. Uh, I do not have the communication uh, part of it going on. Some say that certain things in simulation are harder, and one of them is VFR, visual flight rules. That's, that's the kind of flying where you fly with your eyes, mostly, because in real life you can see subtlety, which you can't quite see on the computer. Um, and also you don't feel things. You know, normally you'd be feeling things. So you don't feel those interactions, but uh, some say that's actually also a good thing you learn with instrument flying because you're not being fooled by the outside world. You can concentrate and learn. So there's interesting different things about flight simulation. So no, I could not jump in an airplane and immediately be perfect, but I probably could jump into an airplane, know enough to start it up and uh, fly it and probably land it poorly. We would probably live, but that's uh, again how good these simulations are there is a story of a guy in sweden he learned how to fly from flight simulators uh, jets and he flew commercial jets in sweden for 10 years before he was caught as a career he, that's that was his job he just he forged his license he learned it all from computer simulations so uh it's it's not a game it can be but it isn't. It's virtual flying. And that is my new hobby. And thank you so much all for watching. I really appreciate it. 15 minutes is kind of long to talk about this, but I am excited. And I will try to show little clips here and there and maybe my progress, but I'm not going to bore you too much with, with what I'm doing. But thank you all for watching. Take care.